You know, there must have been at least one point in my life when I thought Leisure Suit Larry was an American equivalent of Tokimeki Memorial, and then congratulate myself for finding a perfect representation that contrasts two different cultures in so many layers, without giving a second thought that how it was never a dating sim but a classic Sierra adventure game. I may sound redundant, but to give a brief explanation, Leisure Suit Larry are a series of adventure games made for adults, developed by Sierra Entertainment Incorporated. So without further ado, welcome to my second episode of Tossing Up, a series where I analyze and review various video games of old and somewhat new. Today I'll briefly cover the very first Larry entry, Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of the Lounge Lizards, but only because I need to before moving on to the subject of this video, Red Hair Larry, which is kind of a Leisure Suit Larry fan game developed in South Korea. I like to call it K Larry, because apparently sticking a K before a word is how Korean mainstream media decided to brand everything remotely related to Korea. Going back to the American Larry, legend says the first Larry game didn't receive much of a push from the marketing department, and some retailers even went on to sell it at all due to its supposedly lewd contents. But once the game hit the market in 1987, just by word of mouth, its massive commercial success put Sierra to the top of the industry. Leisure Suit Larry spanned multiple sequels throughout its decade run, including a complete remake in 1989, and even garnered enough Kickstarter nostalgia money $655,182 to be exact, to receive a second remake in 2013. To give a short summary, the first Leisure Suit Larry is about Larry Laffer, a leisure suit wearing 38-year-old virgin with a taste stuck in the disco era, and his visit to his Las Vegas-like city of lost wages in search of true love. If the gamers back in the days were looking for sexy pixel porn, they must have been sorely disappointed. Because Leisure Suit Larry is a textbook example of plain stupid fun. Sure, the game throws around adult humor and is riddled with sex jokes and double entendre. And although some of them didn't age well in today's climate, I personally didn't even find it vulgar enough to feel offended. Of course, sensitivity is naturally subjective, but still, I guarantee that Larry's no booking man. By that I mean the developer didn't intend malice towards any group of people, and is written with more taste and consideration than Booking Man can ever dream of. But even before Leisure Suit Larry reached abroad and beyond into South Korea, people were already having prejudice about its content. So much so that according to a 1992 article from Korean PC magazine MyCom, Leisure Suit Larry 1 made up 19.6% of the inappropriate games category in YMCA's reports on the social awareness of teenagers' exposure to visual media. Despite as far as I know, Leisure Suit Larry 567 and the 1989 remake were officially licensed in South Korea but without translation. And all of that happened only after pirated copies of Land of the Lounge Lizards began circulating in the early 90s. Inappropriate or not, Larry seems like a better edutainment game than Kiss Quest, at least according to a few online accounts stating it motivated them to study English, allegedly resulting in one person being accepted to a prominent university. And that seems to be the case for Jima, who first got hold of the diskette containing Larry back in January 1991. He said he spent a month studying English to get through the age verification quiz and more months trying to get through the game. For those who haven't played Larry, the age verification quiz consists of trivia that the developers consider to be common sense among most American adults at the time period. I imagine poor Jima solving this quiz every time he started the game. Only if he knew about Alt-X. Fast forward to 1996, Jima, who got a bit ambitious with his coding practice, developed and released Red Hair Larry, which was more or less a Leisure Suit Larry fan game. The game was distributed for free on early internet forums and accumulated over 20,000 downloads which was impressive enough for the time to get introduced in gaming magazines. Apparently this is one of the games that made their childhood for people from my generation and earlier on, but Red Hair Larry completely flew under my radar and I haven't heard of its existence until much later. Of course I knew what Leisure Suit Larry was, but chances of a teen girl who plays Japanese dating sims and otome games being into a male-centric sex comedy starring an unattractive protagonist is pretty meek, and I was no exception. I did like point-and-click adventure, but I always preferred Lucasfilm over Sierra. Like how Loom is one of my favorite games of all time, while the King's Quest series still feels kinda cursed to me. Back to Jima and how he made Red Hair Larry using his own quick basic based game engine called Screen Adventure Book Pro. As I stated before, Larry was already licensed in Korea by this time but was never translated. So Jima, in his decision to follow the exact storyline for Leisure Suit Larry 1, adapted the entire game to accommodate both this game engine and South Korea's cultural sentiments. The result was a bit bizarre to be honest. The plot is the same, the puzzles are still there, but it plays completely different from the original. 
In Jima's own words, Red Hair Larry boasts 168 tile maps, 8 areas, 4 musical scores, 120 characters and dialogue patterns, various small events, and 9 casino games including a trivia quiz containing 800 questions. And he wasn't lying to sell more copies unlike so many other advertisements I've covered in my previous videos. Red Hair Larry even added some convenient features such as a map screen and checking the inventory with the press of a single button. Jima describes his game as a RPG with a casino. Indeed, it looks like an old-school RPG such as Ultima and Wasteland with a tiny character traversing on a tile map. The music consists of the Leisure Suit Larry theme, a wedding march, and two popular South Korean 90s pop songs all arranged by Jima himself. However, listening to the same tune in the background really takes a toll, so I recommend turning the whole thing off with a single keystroke, and play your favorite album instead. Many NPCs strewn throughout the game comes with a unique dialogue, which initially made me dread them because I expected to read some campus love story or a booking man level of K misogyny, especially considering it's a K Larry indie game. But to my surprise, it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought. Not that it isn't misogynistic, but not as bad as any other commercially released South Korean dating sims of the 90s. You know, like a drunk woman NPC ranting over how history blames women for all the wrongness in the world by giving Eve or Pandora as an example, and states that women should rule the world instead. Or another drunk woman NPC complaining that she's mistreated due to her gender because women don't participate in mandatory military service, and that sort of things. But it helps that K. Larry himself does not talk too much and is at least polite enough to address strangers using honorifics. From what I can garner from some of the fourth wall breaking in game dialogues, I think Jima felt either too shy to write down such straightforward vulgarity, or was genuinely wary of the risk of getting charged for distributing pornographic content. Most of the NPCs provide flavor, background information, hints, along with some surface level philosophy common in any edgy 20 something year old male. One example being the in game currency is called Pig to throw shade on greedy capitalist pigs. So Red Hair Larry, defying my presumptions, didn't end up being that horrid. Or that's what I thought until I made some significant progress. No matter how not too bad the writing is, this game still feels like a chore. Yes, I did beat the game. And no, I didn't cheat my way this time. Red Hair Larry is a completely functional game made with a lot of effort, which puts itself above a majority of Korean video games at the time, including the likes of Booking Man. Just like the original Larry, money remains an important part of the game mechanic, but K. Larry, for some reason, went completely overboard with its value. Here's an example. In the original Leisure Suit Larry, there is a point where Larry needs $200 to woo a certain woman. K. Larry requires 100 times that, so 20,000 pig. And that's not solely based on the exchange rate between currencies, considering a cap ride costs 50 to 70 pig, and 300 pig pays for a glass of whiskey. Just like the original game, the only way to earn money is using the casino. Though K. Larry provides us with 9 gambling games, over half of them are just variants on Guess the Number game. And like any casino, you are rigged to lose. On top of that, the maximum wage is 200 pig, with the biggest payout being 300 to 1 if you get a royal straight flush in a game of poker. Which means that will never happen. Instead, investing in a woman playing a slot machine is a much reliable and quicker source of income. One investment takes up to 500 pig with about a 1 in 10 chance of earning back a maximum of 2,500, which isn't too bad of an odd when we can save scum. But 20,000 pig is just not enough for K. Larry, all thanks to the game's exclusive stamina stat. K. Larry starts out with 100 stamina and a minimum of 400 is required to beat the game. Stamina can be raised in two ways. First, fight the thugs who randomly appear on the town map. The battle follows a text-based format where K. Larry can either choose to attack, block, recover, or run away. The damage and recovery outputs seem completely random, but K. Larry does give and receive more damage when he has higher stamina. And because the game has to be unfair, the enemy has a way higher chance of completely blocking your attack and landing a critical. Losing in a fight means instant game over. The enemy's HP ranges from 100 to 400 and no weapons or items can aid K. Larry through the battle. A victory will boost K. Larry's maximum stamina by 2 to 10, depending on the thug's HP. It is possible to beat a 400 HP thug even when K. Larry has a lower stamina if you get good rolls, but that still takes about 7 minutes of mindless macro. And since no sane person enjoys repeating this 30 times, I believe almost everyone will go for the second method. For those unfamiliar with the first Larry game, the nameless hooker is an NPC who Larry can optionally interact if we want to put an end to his virginity. Doing so without a condom leads to a funny ending involving a sparkling STD. 
On the other hand, in K. Larry, sleeping with a hooker is almost a necessity because using her service by paying her 990 pick raises K. Larry's max stamina by 20 and that doesn't involve tapping on a keyboard for more than 5 minutes. Of course, K. Larry must have a condom to avoid catching what this game calls acute aids, which results in an immediate game over. Compared to the original, where Larry chooses death rather than living through STI, K. Larry merely spends the rest of his life bedridden as his mother scolds him. K. Larry cannot carry more than one condom at a time, so he must visit the convenience store to buy one after every time he sleeps with the hooker. Thus begins the prostitute run, a sequence of running back and forth between Lefty's bar where the hooker is located and the convenience store. Hooker costs 990, condom costs 370. A round trip to the convenience store costs 140, so 1500 pig in total is required to increase stamina by 20. Each prostitute run takes about a minute, which makes it far more efficient than boxing 30 or more thugs. Raising his stamina by 300 requires 15 prostitute runs. That's 22,500 pig in total. Adding the aforementioned 20,000 pig to beat the game, plus the taxi fees comes down to a total of 45,000 pig. That's not too big of a number if we sacrifice about an hour of our real time in the casino. And in case you lost your stamina, the only way to recover it is either buying something to drink or paying a mysterious stamina recovery man who seems like a manifestation of a lazy game mechanic that accepts 400 pig for a full recovery. Though the currency is named pig to mock the rich, it certainly seems the world of K. Larry is already being ruled by pigs. Perhaps the choice was deliberate. Maybe Jima was criticizing South Korea's unruly capitalism and sloppily regulated prostitution. But again, let's keep in mind while the nameless hooker in Larry 1 takes part in Larry's narrative as he realizes sex in itself was never his true goal, the hooker in K. Larry is no more than a convenient tool to help us beat the game. Intentional or not, it rings true to Korean values, which in my opinion makes Red Hair Larry interesting. And this is expected because naturally, the typical Korean sentiments are quite different from whatever we see in a Larry series. Such differences are reflected right from the premise. K. Larry is an unemployed 31-year-old man living with his mom, who kicks him out of the house and won't let him return until he either finds a job or a lover. Compared to Larry Laffer, who in his midlife crisis, after getting fired from his job, left his hometown in search of women to satisfy his own desire. K. Larry is uninterested in his emotional needs and looks for a woman, not because he cares about true love, but because he needs a good enough bride in order to, in his own words, please his mother, and marry up to reach an adequate social status for a man of his age like the proper Confucian he is. Such contrast is also visible in K. Larry's portrayal of Eve, who is, in the first Larry game, the true love for our protagonist. While the original Eve remains a mysterious woman throughout the game, the K Eve comes with an elaborate backstory about being a business tycoon who owns the disco and the hotel in the city of Lost Wages. Eve 2 is proved to be quite rich and successful in Leisure to Larry 2, but we know Larry didn't love her for her wealth. On the other hand, number of NPCs goes out of their way to comment on how rich yet elusive K Eve is, as if the game is appraising her worth for us. Not that K. Larry doesn't have to prove himself since he must go through an annoying maze and then consecutively defeat three of her bodyguards who won't even engage in a battle unless his stamina reaches 400. Though Jima hinted a sequel by foreshadowing that just like the original Larry, their marriage won't last. But Red Hair Larry 2 hasn't been released to this day. While we're at it, let's compare the rest of the romantic interests from Larry and K. Larry. Fawn, a swindler who robs Larry of all his money, remains pretty much the same other than requiring more money and 300 stamina. Larry, of course, feels miserable after being duped, but K. Larry reacts by lamenting on how he disappointed his mother for failing to find the bride. And then he swears to beat the shit out of Fawn next time he lays eyes on her. Though to be fair, that second part might be coming from an angry gamer who were pissed at Fawn from the original game rather than saying anything about K. Larry being a bloodthirsty Korean. Then there's Faith, a security guard Larry attempts to seduce despite her claims of having a boyfriend. The narrator suggests using some outside assistance, so Larry gives her a bottle of aphrodisiac named Spanish Fly. But much to his dismay, Faith, under the influence of the drug, abandons her station to be with her boyfriend. So a pretty straight jab at Larry, who can't get what he wants even if he dares to cross that moral boundary. In K. Larry, Faith became a nameless secretary with little dialogue, who's no more than an obstacle between him and Eve. We get no explanation on why K. Larry has to give her the aphrodisia. But probably the most tragically hilarious K. moment in Red Hair Larry is where Jima, who was then 26, attached his actual pager number in-game out of desperation on wanting a girlfriend. 
I'm not making things up. You can find it here in Lefty's bar. And also this radio broadcast is numbered with presumably his personal story about the loneliness of being single. Jima wasn't trying to be artistically creative, but just like Larry, was sincere in his attempt and gave out his real number. This may have set up a perfect meta-narrative, but ended horribly for Jima. And what else did he expect? Anyone who played K. Larry at the time probably would have been straight guys. By his own account, for acting out in desperation, Jima got harassed with sexual messages for months to come. The man would be in his 50s by now. I hope today he found what he truly wanted. The story of Jima reminded me of yet another quasi-famous Leisure Suit Larry-inspired fan game named Fuck Quest, created by Richard Eder. Fuck Quest was written in English and was released a few years after K. Larry on 1998. But not only both were free fan-made games, they came from the same parts of their heart. The game is about our virgin hero Richard who is the ugliest man in the world, stepping out of his home because, in the game's words, he might explode unless he gets some pussy soon. It's nothing more than a tasteless porn with crude pixel art, though the sequel added a romance plot between Richard and Jennifer Aniston. Contrast to the initial controversies concerning its sexual subject matter, Leisure Suit Larry proved to be a comedic masterpiece made of introspective, self-depriving humor, but at least two creatively driven individuals unironically projected themselves into Larry, which resulted in two amusingly different games with distinct themes, sharing the same source for inspiration. Furthermore, Red Hair Larry serves as an interesting example for localizing a culturally unique piece of work like Leisure Suit Larry. It derives greatly from the original, but at the same time, the game does feel like a Korean Larry, which is even more impressive taking into account it's a product made by a single fan. And like I said before, grinding aside, K Larry is a playable, not so broken game, which can't be said for a lot of domestically developed games of that time. From what I can gather from Jima's personal website, last update being 2018, he is a very talented and productive programmer and web designer, so I assume he must be doing just fine. And that about does it. Thanks for watching while I recognized the 90s K-pop media used in Red Hair Larry, looked up how the artists were doing, and got sad. And though I may give my thoughts on all the Larry titles someday, I can't promise you when. Anyways, hope you found this fun and or useful in some way. Be seeing you in the next video.